point of a theory of everything is if you understand the game you're in, you can be a better player. If you understand uh, your purpose here and you know what the point of your existence is and the whys and hows, then you can interact more productively. So it, it, uh, the point of writing a big toe, and I call it a big toe, not just a toe. Starting with Einstein, um, he started uh, producing a toe. It was called unified field theory, but that was a kind of an objective toe to unify all the objective science, which in that case meant relativity and quantum mechanics, under one overarching understanding. But a big toe has to do that, has to accomplish that. And on top of that, it also has to include consciousness and the subjective world as well as the objective world. So a big toe has to explain everything. So metaphysics, physics, um, you know, paranormal and normal, all of these become one, one thing under one overarching scientific theory. So the big toe is really, is really science. So, in the in the attempt to my children in the background, <laughs> yes. I, you don't you don't mind the noise, but if we had a, a way to get down there and see them, you'd find the three of the coolest dogs you ever saw in your life, and I mean cool. One of them looks like a genuine Wookie, <laughs> as big as one too. Yeah, Bella would wish she was here. <laughs> so so Tom, uh, we we discussed when we were talking about this last night that that consciousness is the source. Mm -hmm. What is consciousness? It seems to me like there are 53,273 versions of consciousness. What is consciousness? I thought it was 53,274. You must, <laughs> you must have left one out. Um, consciousness, this will, this will sound kind of funny to people who've, who are studying consciousness, but consciousness is information. It's an information field, okay? It's data. Consciousness is the only thing that is fundamental. Everything else is derived from consciousness, including this physical reality. Us, our bodies, our brains, whatever. We are all derived from consciousness. So consciousness is the fundamental reality. All else stems from that. Consciousness is information. It's a data field, if you will. It's evolving, so it's self-aware, and it can change itself. It can evolve. It can grow. And we are part of this larger consciousness system, as I call it, that is evolving. And we're, we are part of that strategy for evolution. So as it evolves, we're, we're part of that evolution. And what part do we play in making that happen? Okay, the part that we play is that, okay, let's start just with a larger consciousness system. And we say we have some sort of potential energy that's self-aware. And this self-aware potential is not really very bright yet. It hasn't evolved. We're just going to start at the beginning. But it can discern two states, this way and that way. You know, just two things that are different. And it can discern that it can kind of exist in two states. And if it can exist in two states, then there's nothing that would keep it existing in three states or four states or n states. Well, now all of these states then look like zeros and ones, you see. So now we have a, a system that is aware that it can exist in different states, creating information. Information based on the, just the fact that it can perceive different states, ones and zeros. So it only really needs two states, but it needs lots of those two states. So it just duplicates. Well, that's, you know, that's the way this information system grows. So now this information system needs to evolve. The way information systems evolve is by lowering their entropy. Entropy is a physics term, comes out of uh, thermodynamics that means, a lower entropy means more order. Okay. So if you have randomness, there's no information in randomness, it's just random. If you want information out of randomness, you have to lower the entropy of that random system. So you can have a bunch of um, children's blocks and you just throw them on the floor, there's no information there.
but you can take those blocks and you can spell words or you can make patterns. It doesn't have to be a word, it could be a pattern as far as information goes. Information, let's say if I took those children's blocks and I put one up, one, one up, one down, one up, one down, what would the next one be? It would be up. How do you know that? The pattern gives you information, you see. So now you can have these patterns of ones and zeros and the system is evolving, trying to lower its entropy, create information and content with what it has. That's how things evolve. They become more complex, they become more survivable, survivable if you will, and, and death to the system is randomness, no information, you see. <clears throat> so it evolves toward lower entropy states. Now, in order to evolve, uh, what do you say, more efficiently, it can't just interact with itself because that's very limiting. So what does it do? It does just like those one-celled creatures did, which were doing the same thing, you know, where we evolve from. Look at physical evolution. Same thing. You start with this one thing, right? And this one thing was able to discern whether it was you know, better off or not better off, or more survivable or not, by trying things and then seeing what happened. So it needed more complexity because more complexity is more adaptable, it's more survivable, it's lower energy. More complexity is more order, more information. So the cells divided and you had multi-celled creatures. And then those divided and you had specialization among the cells. You know, the part for digestion, the part for moving, the part for defense, and so on. And then the control part. So you had all these parts. So this is more and more complication, more and more information, lower and lower entropy in the system. Well, this larger conscious system did something like that too. So it found that it could increase its choices, the novelty uh, in its environment, it could increase its complexity and lower its entropy by breaking into pieces. And these pieces then could interact with each other. Now suddenly you have multiple pieces interacting with each other with free will. Now you have all sorts of possibilities that didn't exist before. You see, and each piece then is growing and evolving as well as the whole evolves and grows as the pieces evolve and grow. Well, we represent some of these pieces. You see, we're pieces of the larger consciousness system. And our job here is to evolve, to grow up, to uh, lower our entropy, increase the content, the quality of our consciousness. Now, what does that connect to? Decreasing the entropy of consciousness means growing toward love. Love and lower entropy are, you know, are reflections of each other. It's the same thing. Now let me give you a little example of why that makes sense. Just, uh, you have these pieces, right, that kind of the multi-celled version of consciousness. So it's about interaction. It's about um, relationship amongst the pieces. Okay. Let's say that we just do a thought experiment here and we'll take maybe uh, 10,000 beings and we'll say all 10,000 of them um, are loving, caring, nurturing. Uh, it's about other, not about themselves. And we'll take those 10,000 beings, we're going to put them in a, in a little world with a certain amount of resources, and we just let them go and see what happens. Okay. Now, these are the kind of people that if somebody's barn burns down, all the neighbors come in and help them build it back up. Mm -hmm. Not for a fee, but they just, just do that mm -hmm. because they're helpful. They care about other, you see. Um, and now we'll have another group of people, and this group of people are just the opposite. They're based not on love, but on fear. Fear being the opposite of love. So they're based on fear, and it's all about them. What's in it for me? Uh, if they're going to do something, it's going to be because they get something for doing that something. And we're going to take 10,000 of them and put them in the same world with the same resources and let them go and see what happens. Okay? Now, how are they going to end up after... I don't know, 20 years, we're going to look at them and see how they're going to end up. Well, what would you expect? You would expect the group based on fear, okay, to basically they'll clump into power centers because it depends on some of them will get a little more power than others and then they will control others and then others will come for that protection that power gives and so on. They'll group into power centers. And before long, you'll find that the very few power centers probably control 95% of all the resources 
and they're constantly fighting with each other, trying to get each other's stuff, right? Where have we heard that before? Yeah, <laughs> that sounds kind of like where we live, doesn't it? That sounds yeah. like where we live. Yeah, that sounds that like where we live. Then what about the other group? The group that's caring and that uh, it's about other, well, they will have optimized themselves within the available resources and you know abilities they have. Everybody will be doing as well as everybody can do. Now that doesn't mean that that uh, you know everybody does the same job. It just means if somebody thinks up something very clever and inventive, it gets shared with everyone. Exactly. So you still have people, you know, who are doing the labor and people who are in control, just like you have in a body. You know, there's parts of you do different things, but it's all very efficient and effective and caring, and everybody cares about everybody else doing as much as they can do with whatever it is they've got. So it optimizes itself. Now, which one is high entropy and which one is low entropy? High entropy is organized, constructive, pulling together, right? That's, that's low entropy, organized, okay? What's high entropy? High entropy is disorganization. Um, you know, somebody builds something up, somebody else comes and tears it down mm -hmm. because they don't like it that somebody has something more than they have and they'd like to get it. So if you get something, then you have to protect it. You know, you have to keep it. So it's basically struggle. Now, where, do we, where does that society go? Well, it's constantly being torn down because those power centers, they're constantly being ripped apart and new power centers coming up. You constantly have the coup d'etat, you know, that changes the management of the power system. There's a constant tearing up and down and you have a very suboptimal arrangement. So all of that's just an example of how we relate love with lower entropy. So the natural state of a low entropy consciousness is love. So here we are in this system, and the system in this larger consciousness system, the system is evolving. We are part of its strategy to evolve by interacting with each other. And what we're supposed to be doing is growing up, evolving, becoming love. That's the whole point of our existence. Now, how do we do that? If we were just part of this information system, we'd just be exchanging data. Well, exchanging data doesn't give you a lot of traction on growing up, on changing, on evolving. It's, it's like we would all, you know, like there's 10,000 people in the chat room, and, you know, you really don't know who you're talking to, you know, that, that 60-year-old lumberjack might be a 12-year-old girl, right? <laughs> you don't know, you know, you don't know whether they're lying, you know, they're making stuff up, you have no idea, so there's very little feedback and there's very little traction. So what we need now to help us grow is an environment, a good schoolhouse, where we can go to interact with each other in a way that we do have that traction. That's why we have this virtual reality that we live in. This physical virtual reality is a schoolhouse. So it's created out of information. How does that work? Well, what, what are you observing now? Look at the camera, right? What are you observing now? You're observing, you just are getting information. You have light coming into your eyes, you have sound coming to your ears, and what is that? It's just information. Okay, when it gets to your eyeball, it gets focused on a retina, it gets turned into electrical impulses, those electrical impulses end up in patterns of neurons. It's just digital information. Ones and zeros, clumps of neurons, places where neurons are and where they aren't. You see pulses and not pulses, it's the same thing. So it's just digital information, same with your hearing, same with your touch, your smell, everything is just data. It's just information. Now we believe this information is coming from light bouncing off me to your eye. Right? But if you, were, if you were in a dark, deep hole someplace, okay, with no light, no sound, nothing, but your brain was getting the same electrical impulses, the same patterns of neurons, you'd see this, the exact same thing you're seeing now. It's just information, you see. So now we can just drop the idea that we're physical bodies and say we're consciousness. We're getting a data stream. And this data stream is the information that we interpret as this reality. So see, that's kind of a thumbnail sketch of, of how that all works. So we, we are now, you know, this is hallucination, if you will. It's just data we interpret. Well, how do we get so clever as to interpret all this data as this reality? Well, we learn how to do that interpretation when we're born. If you've ever looked at a, a newborn infant, they have no idea how to interpret any of the data they get. 
they have to learn. So they're lying there in their crib and suddenly this thing flies around in front of them and they have no idea that that's attached to them. You know, that that's their hand or their arm or they might control it. It's just something in their environment. They have to learn to interpret what that is and how to make the connections that, that uh, control that. They have to learn what's apple, what's mama, you know, what's crib, what's dog, what's all these things. They learn how to interpret. They're getting the information, the data, and they have to figure out how to interpret it. That's what growing up is. That's what we, you know, that's what we become as an infant. So that's how we learn to interpret the data. And we're getting a data stream. So we're consciousness, and we're getting this data stream from this larger consciousness system to create this reality because this is a good schoolhouse. You see, here we get traction. If I'm annoying, mean, self-centered, and whatever, well, I get a different kind of feedback from people than if I'm sweet, loving, caring, and, you know, and a nice guy. If I want to use you rather than, you know, enjoy you as, you know, as friends, then we get different reactions. We get feedback. And there's other feedback besides. One is we make this reality be the way we want it. We, f we create this reality in many ways. Now, it's a multiplayer game, just like World of Warcraft or Sims. You know, it's a multiplayer game, so we're not alone here. But we each get our own individual, independent data stream. Okay, now, because it's a multiplayer game, there's some interaction going on. We have to interpret. You say something to me, I have to interpret what that means. I have to interpret it based on my own experience, you see. So I only get a shadow of what you are telling me. I get it just from interpreting from my experience. I talk to you. You have to interpret that in terms of your experience. You see, communications is a difficult thing because we each have to interpret what the other says based on our own experience. <coughs> So one way we create our own reality, our personal reality, is that we interpret it. We interpret the data. So nobody else lives in the same reality that you do, or that I do, because we're interpreting it based on the sum total of all our experience, which is different than anybody else. You see, now if we all come from the same culture, then we have some metaphors in common, the way we interpret things. We come from a radically different culture, we don't. And it's even harder to communicate, because the metaphors, the symbols, are very different. So that's giving you a little bit of a, you know, kind of sketch of how that works. So if you go back and read Lao Tzu or listen to the Buddha, they'll tell you that all of this is maya. You know, it's, it's not real. This is just in our minds. Well, it's true. And not only, you know, that, it's, a, it's, it's good science. Because if you, if you... Um, look at reality in this way as being a virtual reality then suddenly everything fits together well you can understand physics much better